All right. Today we're going to be looking at proportional reasoning. We've talked about questions like this, if you remember from last unit, what happens to the kinetic energy if you triple the velocity. So if you take the velocity of a certain number, you triple it, what happens to the total kinetic energy? And there were a few different ways we talked about doing these problems. And I want to show us one more today. And this is the one that I kind of suggest that you give a try. And so first you could just kind of look at it and say, well, what would happen if you triple the velocity? Well, if you increase the velocity, it should increase the energy. And if we triple the velocity, we make it three times as much. Uh, in this case, since it's squared, it winds up that the total kinetic energy is actually nine times larger. But if you can't just see that by kind of looking at the equation, what way can we solve this problem? Let's take a look at a method, uh, it's called proportional reasoning, and we're going to use proportions, ratios, to figure this out, taking this equation and dividing it by another equation. All right, so I've, I've written down some equations here, some, some things that are kind of like knowns, is that at the beginning, we're going to just say that it has some mass m, and at the end, m1, is also equal to that same mass m. And we know that at the beginning it has some velocity, we'll call it v, and at the end we know that it's going to have three times as much, it's going to have three v. So when we try to plug this into the equation, we've got this one right here, that the initial kinetic energy is just equal to one half the initial mass times the initial velocity squared. Let's write down what it would be for afterwards. And here we've got k1, that's our, our second situation the second time, we're figuring out what the energy is, it's one half mv squared. But instead of just v, we're plugging in three times v, because that's what it says, that's what our number is. And so we're going to work this out. All right, so here we go. This is what our final energy is, it's nine halves mv squared. And so when we look at this, you might think, well, it's going to be nine halves as much as what it was at the beginning, but it's not exactly right. So what we're going to do here is this next step, which is we take this equation and divide by this equation. So here we go. We're going to take a look at this and actually say the left-hand side is going to be equal to the right-hand side when we divide these two things by each other. Something, something kind of like this. And now what we can do is we can do some cancellations. We see the top and the bottom here on the right have a mass. The top and the bottom here on the right also have v squared. And they also both have a number divided by 2. So we can cancel out the half, we can cancel out the m, we can cancel out the v squared. And so we cancel everything out, we get that k initial, k0 over k1 is equal to 1 over 9. And the question said, what's the final kinetic energy in terms of the original kinetic energy? And so let's rewrite this so that it's the final in terms of the other one. We're solving for k1. So what I did here is just cross multiply, get this k1 over here, the 9 on the top, and we get that the k1 is actually 9 times as large as k initial. That's what we said before. If you knew how to do it the other way, great, do it that way. But if you're having trouble with these kinds of questions, this is a great method to do it. Let's take a look at one more problem solved this way. So let's take a look at this question. If one collision has an impulse of 2 at j0, so that's the impulse, that's the number, you can think of this as a number, even though it's not really written as a number, in an interval of time of 3 times delta t0, which would be some other interval, this is 3 times that big, it results in a force of f0. That's the original force for these situations. In terms of f0, how strong would the force be for an impulse of j0 in delta t over 2? So this is a different impulse, a different time, and we're trying to calculate the force. Okay? So we're going to do the same thing that we did for this other one, but in this case we're going to set up an equation that relates these things together. And I think if you remember this is going to come from the impulse definition, which is J, the impulse, is equal to the force times delta T, or the J impulse is equal to force times delta T. All right, so we're going to set up some equations the same way we did before, but we're actually going to plug all these numbers in. And so we've got here the first equa equation that we've got, 
It says 2 times j naught for the impulse, 3 times delta t for the time, and the force is actually just f, and then f naught. And then here, this is for some new force we'll call force 1 or f1. And that's going to be j naught, just the original a number for the impulse. f1 is the, the force we're looking for, and then this one is delta t over 2. And so when we go through this, we're going to actually do what we said before and divide these two equations by each other, use a ratio. All right, and now what we've got is 2j0 over j0, and so those should cancel. And our delta t's are going to cancel, and let's go ahead and rewrite this and then solve for f1. All right, so now we've got a fraction in the denominator. We remember we're going to flip that guy and multiply. We wind up with this being equal to 2 on the top. And now if we divide both sides by 2, or if we cross multiply, if we keep simplifying this down, we actually get that f1 is equal to f0 times 3 in this case. Uh, I made some errors here, but the big takeaway is that this is a different impulse for a different amount of time, and a different force comes out of it. So that's the way we're going to look at these kinds of questions. We're going to have some practice that we'll do in class. Um, if you have any questions about this approach, please ask. Uh, if you remember some of the other ones that we did before, like making up numbers and plugging them in, you can try that as well. Uh, good luck with these. We're going to practice them in class, and we'll see you there.